In a past video, I demonstrated how you could directly connect two computers together via their modems using a really simple circuit consisting of no more than a 9 volt battery and a resistor to simulate a telephone line in the most basic form uh, to make loop current or talk battery as it's often known in the trade. I made this little box which has a 9 volt battery, a 300 ohm resistor, and an LED all in series with two RJ11 sockets. And when you plug something into these RJ11 sockets, such as two computers via their modems, and you run the right commands on those computers, and you enable the right settings, such as uh, disabling dial tone detection and stuff like that, those two computers can handshake via their modems and have a connection between them as if they w had actually made a telephone call between each other. And you can use that connection to transfer data or stuff like that. And it's kind of fun because you get, you know, you get all the dial-up sounds that you normally get even though it's not going through an actual phone line. And it's useful for transferring data between two vintage computers if you don't have a null modem cable to go between their serial ports. It's fun and it's really simple and easy to do. And in the same spirit, if you were to connect two ordinary telephone sets into this box, you would be able to talk to each other because the box generates loop current and that's all you need to speak into one phone and have your voice be heard on the other phone. So it might be fun for that too. Well in today's video I'm going to show you another thing you can do with this circuit and that's use a fax machine like this 1992 Panasonic fax machine as a very crude, low-quality computer printer using the same concept. The computer and the fax machine are connected together via a telephone line, or in this case, a simulated telephone line, and you use fax software on the computer to simply uh, send some sort of document, whatever you want pretty much, as a fax, to the fax machine, which then prints it out. For this demonstration on the computer end, I've got the Epson Action Note 4 SLC 33, 33 megahertz wannabe 486 laptop from 1992, because I'm lazy and this is the easiest of my vintage computers to get going, and it has a built-in modem. And in preparation for this video, I installed Delrena WinFax, which is an old uh, uh, faxing software for Windows. This is Del Reno WinFax Pro version 4.0 from 1994. It's abandoned where you can get it on winworldpc.com. And I just installed it on Windows 3.1 here. And the really cool thing about Del Reno WinFax is that it makes itself apparent to the computer as a printer. So if you want to fax something, um, you just open it up in whatever program format, whatever you want, it's completely agnostic, and you just hit print on that program, print to Del Reno WinFax, and then WinFax automatically pops up, gets you to punch in the number that you want to fax to and any other settings you want to do, and it does the process of faxing that document. It's pretty neat. It's pretty cool. And in a situation where you actually had the computer connected to a telephone line, it would be very useful because it can send and receive faxes. Uh, when the line starts ringing, WinFax will automatically answer and start receiving the fax. It's, it's pretty versatile software. So I've got the computer's 9600 baud fax modem connected to one end and the Panasonic fax machine connected to the other end. And that just to demonstrate, if I lift up the handset, you can see the little yellow LED comes on. Because the uh, circuit is closed and the current's able to flow. And the same thing would happen if I issued an ATH1 command to bring the modem off hook on the computer. 
for our first demonstration here, I'm going to open Microsoft Word. This is Microsoft Word 6.0. And uh, I'll just prepare a little document here. Two facts. And I'm just going to type a little hello world. It's not quite caught up yet. This computer is not the fastest. It's a 33 megahertz wannabe 486. Basically a 486 running on a 386 bus and 4 megs of RAM. So Windows stuff is definitely not fast. So I've written hello world. Let's actually make it a bit bigger. Now we're talking, and I'll put in some clip art too. Insert picture. And let's see, we'll put in a cat. There's our cat. I'll put in another one. Uh, not a very interesting piece of clip art, it's just a silhouette. Unless the limitation of this uh, monochrome VGA display isn't showing what the picture actually looks like, I don't know. Uh, let's try fall. That might be some leaves, maybe. Yes, it is. All right. So I've prepared my document that I want to print out using this whack job of a setup. So I'm going to hit Control P to print. And you can see printer WinFax on fax modem. So I'm going to hit OK. Once I find my mouse pointer. And on a lot of stuff I tried in preparation for this video, some stuff takes a long time. Uh, to for for WinFax to make it into a faxable document, um, something uh, something else we'll demonstrate uh, in a bit was a JPEG image, a really small JPEG image, um, like a 30, 32 kilobyte JPEG image. Um, I opened it in QuickTime Picture Viewer, and I went to fax it. It took fifteen or twenty minutes to prepare before it actually went off hook and started faxing. <laughs> this computer is not up to the task of rendering something like a JPEG image into whatever format it uses to send as a fax. Another thing I tried was a, a PDF document I have, here we go, finally. I have Adobe Acrobat 3.0 on here, which this thing is absolutely not equipped to run because it takes like the sample document that comes with uh, Acrobat Reader 3.0. That alone takes like two minutes to show up on the screen, and that took like 20 minutes to turn into a fax. But luckily, once you fax something once, it keeps the fax form of it in the outbox, and you can send it again. So that's what I'll be doing for our subsequent tests. So WinFax Pro comes up, and 2 is just where you want to put the name. I'll just put to me. And you do need to put in a number. It can be any number. I'll just put in a 1. If you put no number, it, um, it looks like it's faxing, but it never actually brings the modem off hook. So I'm not sure what it's doing. And you can set standard or fine resolution. Um, the super fine resolution wasn't standardized yet at this time, so it's not available. Even though I have it set to fine res, um, the fax machine, this particular fax machine at least, receives it as a standard resolution. So there's some sort of incompatibility going on there. But that's all we need to do, and I'm going to hit send. And it's going to come up with a little status window in the bottom left here that shows the progress. 
It'll, it'll, it's, it's very verbose. It tells you every single thing that the modem's doing in preparation. And it gives you a percentage of completion. And it gives you the speed that it's being sent at and everything. It, it's a very nice program. I have found it quite easy to use, but at the same time, it's quite powerful as well. I like it. I, uh, there we go. I used DOSFAX before, and I found it much harder, much finickier, and much less reliable to use. But WinFAX works pretty darn good. So that didn't take too long to uh, render into a fax transmission. So now it's just setting up the modem, doing all the AT commands, the haze commands to set everything. And it's gone off hook, so I'm going to bring the fax machine off hook. And you can hear the fax tones being sent by the computer. I'm going to hit start. Oops, gonna have to block that one, but there you go, and the fax machine is printing it out. Making flatulent noises. Here it comes. When fax says 100% complete. Looks like it's going to print the whole letter size page. And it's done. So there's what we got. Oh, it actually, um, even though it wasn't sent in halftone mode, it was able to uh, show the lighter color in part of the clip art there. Very good. So there you go. If, uh, if the apocalypse happened and you desperately needed to print something out and all you had was a fax machine, <laughs> there's how you can do it. So let's, uh, let's close this. And we'll go into uh, WinFAX itself, and we'll print out a couple of more documents. So here's what WinFAX Pro, the program itself, looks like. It's pretty nicely laid out. You got an inbox, an outbox. And there's the log of what I've sent before. And so to resend something, you can right-click on it in this log, one of the few Windows 3.1 programs that use the second mouse button. And you can click Resubmit. So this was the uh, PDF that I printed out. Looks like everything's good. Actually, let's do a cover page, too. I haven't seen what any of the cover pages look like. I believe it comes with a whole bunch of them. Some of them quite fun to use. Let's see. Oops. <laughs> to err is human. To forgive is good business. Oh, my God. Sorry this took so long. Oh, I'll give you a little preview. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> all right, let's do that one. Uh, they all look fun. And we'll hit send. And I'll bring the fax machine off hook now. So you can hear it dial the one before it starts sending out fax tones. Oh, it's got to render the cover page. Wonder how long this will take. Oh, 
not too long. Nope, I gotta hit receive or start. Oh, this is animated. This little uh, thing, it's it's a uh, it animates with the progress percentage, which I think is very adorable. Here comes the cover page. second page. Actually, I'm now recalling a, uh, a fax that I received from somebody on my dedicated fax line that I make public on the internet. And uh, they used WinFax Pro and they used one of these funny uh, cover pages. And then there's the Adobe Acrobat Reader 3.0 sample document. This uh, fax of it does not do justice to the complexity of it. There was a... a Fine, finely dotted background and stuff. But you get everything that's important. So the last thing I'm going to print was that JPEG image, just so you can see how one of those uh, come out, a photograph. And of course this isn't limited to just uh, vintage computers. A modern computer can do this as well as long as you have a modem on it. And of course way easier on a modern computer because the uh, Windows fax and scan software that w Windows has had since Windows XP, that can take just about any kind of document directly and uh, fax it. Although I don't know if it's if you're able to disable uh, dial tone detection. I, I'm not sure about that. There we go. Oh, 
Oh, another little tidbit. Um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but there is a standard for color faxing. Color faxing is a thing that exists, and it is an ITU standard, but it never took off. Um, but the standard exists. Uh, modern color printers that have faxing capabilities, a lot of them have, uh, uh, so a lot of them support this color fax standard. And there's also faxing software for computers that uh, have color fax support. The standard is ITU T30E, by the way. Listen to this. So this is a JPEG image. And listen to how slowly this fax machine is printing it out. Can you hear that stepper motor going step by step by step? Because <laughs> it's such a complex, such a complex image. So anyway, if you have a, a ITU T30E capable color fax machine, and one of the few computer programs for faxing that support ITU T30E color faxing, you could do color printouts in a fashion like this. As long as they don't look for dial tone. And there is a photograph of me. It's very vertically stretched for some reason, even though QuickTime, the QuickTime picture viewer did not display it as such, but for some reason it printed like this and it also printed with black bars on either side. But anyway, there you go. A very complex JPEG image. And the uh, fax machine did really well at uh, capturing the lighter tones in addition to the parts that are solid black with uh, dithering I guess. So the WinFax software does quite good at uh, dithering things which is nice. But there you go! There's uh, printing a few things on a fax machine from a computer using a direct connection between that computer and the fax machine using a really simple circuit. How much use something like this would be uh, and, and how economical it would be um, and how easy it is, uh, probably not that much on all three counts compared to just using a printer, but it sure is an interesting thing to try out for fun, that's for sure. Today's video was suggested by a viewer. Thank you, Alistair. And uh, that's it. So there you go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it a little interesting. And I will see you in the next video.